no, you had jury duty and your brain is a potato, so the only thing you're capable of playing is Moon Stompy. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thrabe, and you here for another Legacy video. And I'm going to be real with you, like, I sat in a not very well air-conditioned room from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. today, basically doing nothing. So I'm not in the best shape. So we're going to skip around in the queue a little bit to a deck that I'm super comfortable with, so I'm not just punting into Oblivion tonight. And, uh... Apologies. Normally I put a lot more effort into the deck tech, but we're just going to talk about what's interesting here since I played this so recently on the channel for my sort of preparation for my tournament in Durham. So we are going to be playing with a Moon Stompy Red Prison deck list today, uh, and this list is courtesy of Lee, who is still mess messing around with the One Ring in their build. This is really interesting with initiative creatures because you can go play an initiative creature, you know, go one step deeper the following turn and then play a one ring to guarantee that you get one step deeper. And that means that you go in, you forge your creature, and then you're going to like guaranteed get a trap on an opponent, which is like a lot of times the most defining one of the games. Like a lot of times if you still hold the initiative at trap, it's just game over. It's just too much life loss too quickly. But the One Ring does come with some downsides. It does not imprint under Chrome Mox. It does not pitch to a Fury. And at the end of the day, it is something that does not have power and toughness. It is not a creature that is going after your opponent's life total. It was really good for me the first time that I played it on the channel in this shell. I believe I 5-0'd, but then I think I also 5-0'd the last time I played without it. So, you know, take that all with a grain of salt. This build does feature a card that I don't think I played in either build, which is Lilia the Blade Reforged. Um, without getting into the nitty gritty of it, there's a lot of debate about whether you're supposed to play Lilia or Legion War Boss or Squee. And I opted for Legion War Boss in my build specifically because it is not bounceable via Caracas. And that is such a huge deal when it matters. However, this card is going to give you card advantage in a way that Warboss or Squee wouldn't, and that can be a big deal. Also, this is a card that can, on its own, get out of range of, you know, your Pyroclasms and your Lightning Bolts and such relatively quickly, especially if you go and play it on turn one. The sideboard here is pretty stock. The mana base is pretty stock. It has a Sokenzan, which I'm not really convinced is better than a mountain. But again, I'm always overly conservative in that regard. So I think we're just going to go ahead and jump into the video today. And today's video, as always, is sponsored by both Moxfield.com as well as Cool Stuff Inc. If you need some sweet paper magic cards, check them out and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. Let's rabble. Get it? Like I usually say, never mind. This is a bizarre hand. So I probably go Mountain Chrome Mox, Imprint a Spirit Guide, Chalice, turn two, hopefully draw a land so I don't have to use these and I can loot through them to play Fable. Okay. My opponent is on five cards, which does not instill like good vibes within my soul basic island ponder so chalice of the void on turn one is probably a good play against my opponent unless my opponent is something like show and tell in which case you know it might not matter no shuffle they found something that they like huh that's a card i think i still lead on chalice we will imprint a spirit guide and we're going to go ahead and cast this like this. There's some discussion about whether or not you from Mox and Spirit Guide now, but I would prefer to loot away some number of these cards. That is a Force of Will pitching a Ponder. We are happy with that exchange. That is a two for one. My opponent is down to two cards. Basic Planes. Fuck my Blood Moon, I guess. Rabble Boy. So I'm always playing Chromox. 
I believe that I just imprint the Blood Moon here. I think that thing's time has come and passed. And we are going to play the card that is best versus a single spot removal spell here. Like, if my opponent has Swords to Plowshares, they can eat this token, or they can Prismatic Ending this token, and then I still have this ticking up and giving me value. We don't want to feed the Rabble Master to that. We wouldn't even get a token um, out of that. Okay. There is... It's presumably a pretty good brainstorm for my opponent. And there's the fetch to clear. Ooh, they are just guy. That means I have to watch out for fourth Aeor Lingas in the not-too-distant future. Card's fucking horrifying. That's no shuffle. Seems like they're going to prismatic ending one of my mana sources. I think that's a very greedy play with a fable loot available. That is a fury. So I am using this ability. I am always looting away fury. Statistically speaking, I can usually loot away a spirit guide and get a land or another spirit guide. I am going to do that. Okay, that's fine. Overall, this is worse than the cards that were in my hand, though, unfortunately. We will get a Rabble Master going, but it is going to be soft to another removal spell. Um, my opponent is on zero cards right now, and I do have, like, the backside of Fable of the Mirror Breaker coming. So it's not like things are awful for me. But that was not the Fable of the Mirror Breaker looting that I was hoping for. Oh, that's horrifying. That will beat me. Yeah, I now need Fury in a way that I did not 30 seconds ago. Thank you, City of Traders. Very cool. I'll make my token. Note those tokens do have to attack, so I will also swing in with Goblin Rival Master. My opponent will end up taking 5 damage this turn. And it is possible that I can overwhelm the Cauldra. And I will be trying to do that. Um, but Stoneforge Mystic is incredibly good here. My opponent started tapping a white mana. I'm not sure if that means they drew... Or no, their last card of hand is Cauldra. So that was just a physical dexterity error. Okay, so they have another white source. Cauldra is... Their confirmed last card in hand. That's not bad. I am thinking about whether or not, like, I'm thinking about what I'm copying. I think I'm copying a Goblin Rabble Master. Get two tokens, attack in with a very large number of goblins, crash in for some amount of damage, and then intend on finishing my opponent with trap. So I'm going to do this in the way that ends up with me not losing two life. So I'll pull a mountain out of my deck. Do this. Actually, I guess I could just copy a Caves of Chaos Adventure as well. Is that worth more damage? So, the Goblin Rabble Master is worth one additional token, which is three damage, plus the two. Let's do, let's do this. I'll forge. I will forge up. Let's honestly just spread the damage out here and go wide. So we'll ship in with all of that. Get some triggers. The Fable. Not able to cast that this turn. So my opponent can put in their Cauldra. They can block the Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Take 8 damage. Be dead to trap. Be dead to trap a lot of different ways. Okay, they're going to go for taking a body off the table more permanently. That's fine. That results in them taking more damage this turn. Putting them to two. Already played a land drop, and they're in range of lethal a lot of different ways. It would take some sort of, like, Supreme Verdict style haymaker. I guess a fourth Aerolinga. No, a fourth Aerolinga doesn't do it. A true name nemesis. Uh, this is a deck that I don't want to play against. Yeah, so they are just dead to trap now. I'm very happy to win game one here. I think this is going to be a tough matchup. All right. So, True Name Nemesis is a problem. Cauldra Complete is a problem. In my personal list, I had Cast Into the Fire as a way of exiling Cauldra. 
I don't get that here. I also don't have dead gone as a way of killing Stoneforge. So Fury becomes the primary way that I can kill a Stoneforge Mystic, and in terms of curve, that doesn't line up super well for me. I think I'm going to play Fiery Confluence as a way to send 6 damage to the face and finish off the game if my opponent stabilizes. I will think about Red Elemental Blast. I am not excited about Blood Moon here. I do have Bone Crusher Giants as an out to Stoneforge, actually. Weird to play Rebs alongside Chalice in a fair matchup. Although Chalice goes on two some portion of the time here. This is just one of my few ways of answering True Name Nemesis. It's just awkward because like I'm going to tap out a huge portion of the time, so I'm not going to have this up at the appropriate time. Maybe I just fill my deck with like one Magus of the Moon or one Trinisphere. One of these two would imprint on a Chrome Mox and pitch to a Fury, and pitching to Fury is important in this matchup. Um, let's play one Magus to fill. I can think about Trinisphere when I'm on the play. Oh, this hand is really aggressive. This is an absolute keep. No, we nearly lost that game on my opponents. What, mulligan to five or four? Give you a feeling for how this matchup is going to go a good portion of the time. All right. So we are always casting Chrome Mox and imprinting Simeon Spirit Guide. Is that true? Do I just Caves of Chaos Adventure on turn one because it's my best thing versus what is presumably my opponent's swords to plowshare. That would require putting Goblin Rabble Master under. I'm good with this. Just every, every fiber of my being is telling me play Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Uh, this sucks if I eat a Force of Will here. Yeah. Days undoing in there too. But like, planes go just so heavily telegraph source to plowshares that I think that was worth doing. I think my opponent is using their prismatic endings way too aggressively. They are on two cards. If they had Stoneforge Mystic, Stoneforge is just a better play. So I'm going to read this as they do not have Stoneforge Mystic, and I am going to accordingly play out a threat. It's possible I'm just wrong here, though. Ooh, we're passing. Uh, I'm actually relatively happy with that draw of Fury. That means that I can just play that next turn. Okay, I was right about the source of plowshares. Alright. No Fury this turn. Reason will play next turn. Hopefully it eats like a Planeswalker or a Stoneforge Mystic as well. I think I just throw down the Fury no matter what next turn. That's no Shuffle, so they're going to hit their land drop. No Stoneforge. Ooh, this lets me save Fury for later. I am A-OK -okay with playing the One Ring here. All right. Um, I'm fine to draw the card now. Den of the Bugbear. I guess I could have played that land this turn if I didn't do the pre the One Ring Mountain. But I don't know whether or not my opponent is playing Days. Sure. Rewarded for playing Mountain. All right. A little weird to me that my opponent still has back to basics in. Like, it's not like they do nothing versus my deck. Like, let me be clear. But, you know, I have a lot of mountains. Okay, do I have any reason to play these lands? It's probably worth playing City of Traders. Let's do that. I don't care about its downside. And I want to be able to hardcast Fury easily next turn. Ooh, that is a Hull Breacher. That is not ultimately going to do what my opponent wants it to do, but it is going to stop my looting off Fable, which is relevant. Because, like, I would love to discard these cards and loot through them. So let's cast this Fury. Send Hull Breacher to Hell. Get some treasure. My opponent's at 15. I'll draw some cards. Ooh, new fable? I think new fable. I don't mind that my lands are uh, one-time use here. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. Uh, my opponent needs some sort of supreme verdict thing now. 
Ponder is not what they need. This is just 10 onboard damage. Plus there's a Caves of Chaos Adventurer and or Goblin Rabble Master coming. So that was no shuffle. I'll lose a little life here. Okay. I will use this ability. I'll loot one of these. I think I just loot the Ancient Tomb as well. Okay. So I have three, four, five, six mana available this turn, kind of. I am swinging in for six, seven, eight, nine, ten ish damage. I think I just attack. I don't think I play a Goblin Rival Master now. Send them on in there. I dropped my opponent to five, which, as you know, is a very convenient number when playing this deck. Um, do I draw? Like, I need to draw immediately. Like, at some point, I do need to pay attention to my life total. I will just use this to get one of my mountains that will untap. I will pass the turn. I have Bone Crusher Giant, their face available if I hit something like a Supreme Verdict, uh, which is fine. It is a Supreme Verdict. That can occur. Bone Crusher face. Bone Crusher face seems fine. Put my opponent to two. One, two, three, four. With one more mana, I just have my opponent dead. Uh, I'm going to draw the cards here. Cool. Uh, I am working towards trap. I will forge with no legal targets. I'll lose four life. All right. This comes back. What can beat me? Fourth Aerlingas, so I should play another body. If I just play this, my opponent counters it, it's awkward. But if they don't counter this, I just literally win on the spot. And if they counter this, then they don't have fourth Aerlingas in hand. Yeah. GG's. I think my opponent wins this match the vast majority of the time, but I think they were just too aggressive with prismatic endings in both games. They levy, right? Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. Okay, I think I am going to keep this hand. This is probably turn one City of Traders, Chalice on one, into Rival Master, into Rival Master, but we'll see if we can adjust a little bit. We are playing against Delver. I kind of just want to kill that now and then play a Chalice. I think I don't want to give my opponent the selection. Okay. We nuke that. I evoke this. It doesn't seem like my opponent has a counter spell based on their stops. Yeah. Uh, so our Goblin Rabble Masters are now immune to lightning bolts, and it seems like my opponent does not have counter spells. Uh, this is a very good position to be in. City, play the backside of this. A3 life. Um, I'm just rabbling. This is a time where I don't think my opponent has it, based on behavior from last turn. Like, I could eat a snuff out here, uh, but we are, we are going aggro. Petty theft, a chalice out of play. Sure. That's fine. You can unlock your hand. This is still going to be a very large amount of pressure. And you... Hmm. I don't know if that's the correct way to tap for that ponder. Now, finding lightning bolt is not immediately available. It doesn't matter if they have the other fetch in hand already. Okay. Do I just replay Chalice? Nah. Nah. This game is about killing my opponent. Worst case scenario for me is fetch, lightning bolt, daze. Is it happening? Lightning bolt? No, it is not. Uh, that's still two valuable points of damage in, and then I will just continue to play threats and hope that I outpace my opponent. We're looking to dodge Merktide Regent. Now that one's targeting me. Very fast ponder. And shuffle. 
Okay. Nice. Fable. The haste. The hasty girl. I think so. I, I think this game is about pressure before a Marktide Regent can come down. Sure. And that's what, like, I am trying to keep that pressure up so I can take advantage of this window that I have. Ooh, we're in play. We're triggering. We're attacking. Nice. There's a mountain. I will not play that this turn. Losing City of Traders is too bad for me. That is an Orcish Bowmasters. Okay, so that has pinged a Goblin token. My opponent can then double block to kill Goblin Rabble Master, which they will do. My opponent still takes a pretty hefty chunk of damage here. They are at 10. Lilia has one turn before she is out of range of Lightning Bolt. And again, we, we need to dodge Merktide Regent. That's, that's the problem card right now. That Wasteland's not bad either. Okay. All right, Lilia. Find me a Soul Land, girl. That is weird brainstorm timing. Okay. So, I am interested in these copies of Red Elemental Blast. I am probably interested in Magus of the Moon for free wins. Fire Confluence is on the table. So, in this build, I might want to board out Caves of Chaos Adventurer, especially on the draw. Like, it's lightning boltable. My opponent has Orcish Bowmasters. I can go wide and take the initiative back. I don't know that I'm super interested in that. Most of the rest of the stuff in my main deck looks pretty good here. I am looking at these cards. What do I want to pull from here? The One Ring is in this weird situation where it's like one of the absolute best things that I have versus Merktai Regent, while being one of the worst things that I have versus Days and Spell Pierce sort of effects. I might pull one Chalice. I could also pull a Blood Moon on the draw. It's weird to rely on Red Elemental Blast while keeping all my Chalices. I could pull all the Chalices and play Fiery Confluence as sweepers for small creatures. I'm not sure. I could also play Ley Lines for the game on the draw, but a little shaky on that. Turn 1 Den, Chrome Box Imprint, Blood Moon. I don't, I don't know that I'm in love with this hand. I think I'm going to pitch this one. This is a faster hand. Chrome Box Imprint, Magus, Ancient Tomb, one of these two creatures. This is the eventual follow-up, Pitch Fury. Put Fury back in the deck to draw later when I'm more ready for it. If I draw a land, I can consider lines where I lay Magus on turn one, but I can't consider that unless I draw a land. Through land. This land. From Mox. I have to make my call right here. I think I am going to try to cast Moon Man. It is a daze. My opponent did not want another land. We'll take some damage. Ooh. A five mana this turn. Two card types in graveyard. This is a pretty good turn to take a turn off to Bone Crusher Giant. It's awkward if I were to lose this to something like an Abrade on their turn, but otherwise it's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll wait till their turn. And attempt the stomp. Success. Ponder is no big deal. I'd like to dodge Wasteland. I wouldn't really feel good about that happening to me. Dodged the Wasteland. Nice. So, my opponent doesn't currently have Lightning Bolt up. I think that incentivizes me to try this one this turn. And we'll go ahead and crash on in there. The one ring. When it goes to 16, I think I get aggressive. I'm pretty bad versus a single lightning bolt right now. And this makes me significantly better versus one removal spell. Yep, the downside is that daze is a card that exists. We're okay with getting dazed as long as like a Merktide Regent or Equivalent doesn't just immediately follow it up. 
So let's see what happens here. Down to the bugbear. We are now officially outside of lightning bolt range. My opponent is at 12. Moon? I think I moon so I can't get Merktide regented. Does potentially cost me some life. I mean, like, it always costs me life, Ancient Tomb, you know. Force of Negation pitching Spell Pierce. We'll now play this land. It enters tapped. My opponent's got some plays. Feels like Orcish Bowmasters, which is why I didn't jam the One Ring. The life totals are closer than you might expect, given how this game has gone so far. Sure. So that is a Sacrificial Orc Army token. Uh, I guess don't daze me. This is such a good play to just, like, guarantee the damage this turn. Um, this just clears the board. So we deal the extra to the Orc Army, in case my opponent plays another one. My opponent has lolled in chat. Don't know why it's funny, but I'm glad you're enjoying it. One's at six. I'll play city. Uh, should be very hard for my opponent to win from here. Yep. GG's. Okay, my hand is a keep. And I will use my, impo my opponent's first turn to inform how I play. Don't Aether Vial. Uh, okay, not Aether Vial. So... My opponent is probably playing some wild nonsense. Probably like a white painter deck. My opponent probably has a massive portion of non-basic lands. I think I just fucking moon them. You may draw one card. We give them the moon. We have mooned. Next turn I can Chalice on one and then start playing a reasonable game from there. Yeah. Yeah, come on in. The water's fine. Ooh. <laughs> um, so do I give my opponent a card? In a one land, they are blood mooned out of the game situation. I don't know that I give them a card. Pass. I could also just chalice on zero. My opponent probably has artifacts that matter. Stops a Chrome Mox from their side of the battlefield from happening. I can also just pay my own Chrome Mox. Pay for. Uh, actually, let's let's do this. I'm gonna pay to prevent that. I'm gonna put Goblin Rabble Master under here. Now I've changed my mind. I'm gonna Fable, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a Chalice on one. If this is a Painter deck, this stops a Grindstone from ever happening. And then next turn, I will follow up with Goblin Rabble Master as my clock. I think it's also reasonable to like play this in a way where I can play a fable around Esper Sentinel tax. And like, I think it's fine. Realistically, I probably <laughs> don't need to think too hard about what I do here. Okay, now I have a choice. Um, just rabbling. Red, red, get them dead. Um, anyway, so when you hear me talk about basic lines being good in your monocolored decks, in your multicolored decks, that is a solitude, sure. This is, this is why I preach the basic lands so hard. I will go back to 19 life from the Esper Sentinel attack. Ooh. Let's play that next turn, though. I would like to... Have this start ticking up with Solitude Pitch. Another Esper Sentinel. Great. Yeah. Basic lands, baby. They are the future and the past. And everything, really. Yes. Discard a Blood Moon. Found a Spirit Guide. Not like super into that. It's fine. Opponent goes to 18. I will cast the One Ring. I'll pay one to prevent that. I'll draw my card. Fantastic. Ah, there is a Crumb Mox. My opponent will begin to cast spells. Ethalia Heretic Cathar. Creatures and non-basic lands. Understood. All right, sure. That enters tapped here. I'll draw some cards. 
one, two, three, four, five if I attack, six if I do more. I think I'm just looking at this. Take the initiative, grab a mountain. It's a basic land, it enters untapped. If I attack, I can play a three drop. I don't think I have to do that. And then I just have like Reflection of Kiki Jiki, Copy Caves of Chaos Adventurer, Do Crimes. Now, haste creatures lose a lot of oomph. Sure. I lost Lilia. My opponent can attack this way to always take the initiative. That's fine. I will eat their Esper Sentinel for free. And they can use this to get a basic land. I'm at 18 when everything's said and done. And that's Athalia. Not that big of a deal. I was about to say I'd kind of like to draw a Fury. Uh, we drew a Fury. Cast Fury. One. One. Two. Done. Goodbye. Uh, draw a land. Found a land. Bam. Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Copy. Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Take the initiative. We're done. Yep. We are done. So it looks like my opponent is like playing a legit like mono white hate bears, probably initiative deck list. Magus effects are pretty good against them. I'll board those in. So I am probably not the biggest fan of Chalice of the Void here. Uh, it can stop Chrome Mox and it can stop Swords of Plowshares. That's about it. So I just need one more cut from here. I'll probably board out one legendary creature as my opponent is a Caracas deck. Um, how good this hand is depends on whether or not my opponent plays a turn one hate bear. Like if they turn one Thalia me, then this hand gets slowed down just so much. Otherwise, it's pretty reasonable. I'm going to say it's a keep. It's not the world's greatest keep, but it's probably a keep. 17. So my opponent has a Swords of Plashers in hand. Are we caves in? Maybe just Fable. Mountain, Chrome Mox, Imprint, Spirit Guide, Chrome Mox, Imprint, Shatter Skull Smashing? Still thinking about it. So I'm always imprinting this. I don't think I just YOLO caves on turn one. I think I'm going to imprint the Smashing. It means that I don't have guaranteed 4 mana next turn, but I think a lot of times I just cast Bone Crusher Giant next turn anyway. Cast your swords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, what do you have? An Anointed Peacekeeper. That one doesn't die to Bone Crusher Giant, unfortunately. And sort of a cool thing here. I can just loot away whatever they name. Alright, they have named Caves of Chaos Adventurer. So that costs two more. I think I will just loot it away. I'm always looting away this. I think I just loot away this. Cards aren't the best. I'm not getting maximum value out of my cards. I'm just going to play out a Bone Crusher Giant in hopes of either trading with a creature or copying it with Fable in the not too distant future. Null Rod. Sure. Okay, my opponent is not willing to offer the trade. <laughs> um, so I think I attack in with Bone Crusher Giant and offer the trade on my end, and also offer them an opportunity to use their swords to plowshares if they have another. Wow, okay. So like if you weren't willing to block, you should have attacked. Uh let's attempt to stop my opponent's spells. Now they have their own Null Rod in play, so a Chrome Box doesn't save them this time. And now I have Reflection of Kiki Jiki attack with two copies of Bone, Bone Crusher Giant. Ooh, basic land. They're still playing magic. That is a solitude. I imagine removing Reflection of Kiki Jiki. I am wrong. It is removing Magus. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. My opponent will have access to another planes. Ooh. 
another seasoned dungeoneer. Uh, that is a very scary thing that just happened. Do I end up taking four? Ooh, that's very good. I cannot overstate how good this is, in fact. <laughs> so, Fury. Pitch Simeon Spirit Guide. We will do four damage to Anointed Peacekeeper. We will now Reflection of Kiki-Jiki. Target Fury. We will do four damage to Seasoned Dungeoneer. I would like to go to combat. <laughs> this list is good. Comes a time... With, with, what? What? Okay. Whenever you or at least one permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls, Leyland of Combustion deals two damage to that player. What the fuck is happening over there? It's not Ley Lines, because that deck opens with a bunch of Ley Lines. And doing a quick search, I found a pseudo burn deck list from a couple years ago that played it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chalice on one without taking damage? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I think so. Spirit Guide. Chalice. Uh. This gives me an opportunity to draw another land so that I don't take damage off of Ancient Tomb in playing something like Fable. Okay, Mountain. Okay. Eidolon, that's fine. The One Ring. Huh. Like, is that good? <laughs> it's certainly interesting. I think I have to play Fable, though. I think I need this looting, and I think I need something that can block this card. Leyline of Combustion. Ah. No attack. Understood. Hurry. I'm interested in casting that. I'm going to get rid of Blood Moon. I think the One Ring is too risky. There's a land. I'm going to go ahead and pay two life for a Fury. Nuke that thing out of orbit. Yeah, I know. But now I can attack in with this, and next turn I can play a Chalice on two. And just probably fully lock my opponent out of the game. I say probably because I don't fully know. Like, stuff can happen. I'm not worried about that stuff. Okay. I'm not interested in Shatter Skull smashing that creature. That just costs me life. Let's send in. My opponent's just going to absorb some damage, which is perfectly reasonable. Uh, 6, 12, 13, 14 damage next turn. I'm going to cast a Chalice on 2. I am not going to play this land in case I do end up wanting to use it as a removal spell. I probably don't, but I also have to be cognizant of things like Price of Progress, I guess, although maybe not now. Okay, we won game one versus a weirdo deck. That means we only have to steal one of the next two. So I'm not super into the one ring here. It has Lose Life on it. I'm not super into Blood Moon here versus the mono red deck. My board in options are maybe not the greatest. This is probably what I'm looking at. This actually increases my red count. I guess we're good with that. Fire Confluence is a little awkward in that if my opponent plays that red ley line, it can uh, be a double-edged sword. All right, I don't think uh, I need to tell you that this is a mulligan, but, you know, my job. So, this can fairly remove a creature into play some reasonable cards. I think this is a keep and I get rid of the Ancient Tomb, which is not a very traditional play. But the life loss is kind of a huge deal. And like, I just always plan on tap Shatter Skull Smashing on turn one. Lava Spike me. Lotus Petal is such a wild inclusion here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. 
So, tapped land. If my opponent doesn't play a creature, then, like, my keep is very awkward. Hmm, Black Splash. Bump in the Night. Orcish Bowmaster. Uh, Den. Pass. Orcish Bowmasters. If I take one... I'm thinking about whether or not I get rid of the Bowmasters or the Orc. I'm getting rid of one of them right now. I think it's the Bowmasters itself. Taking one is totally fine. I'm at 12. That's annoying. Because <sighs> that's guaranteed damage. I probably just stomp that as well. I wait till combat to see if they like play another creature or spell prior to attacking. Negative. I still take the full three damage this turn. All right. I am at nine, which I should view as three spells. That's a weird draw. It's my play. It just shuts off a very large number of my opponent's potential top decks. And I. Are we smashing? We are smashing. And a fetch. And a bolt. So I am dead to another live draw at basically any stage. The draw didn't line up very well versus my opponents. I was prepared for creatures, and they did not have creatures. The way that I win this probably involves playing Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That's a blocker for the Orc Army token. And then I use that to try to loot into a soul land to play two spells in one turn, or alternatively loot into another Chalice of the Void. Again, I think I'm just dead most of the time, though. Oh, that's fine. Fiery Confluence is interesting. So, the fastest I am capable of spinning this game is what? Caves of Chaos Adventurer into Caves of Chaos Adventurer into Copy? I think I keep both copies of Caves of Chaos Adventurer and loot these two. That's interesting. Pitch cast Fury. Clear the board. Attack for two. Have five total mana. Kind of six total mana if I play Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Burning Spear doesn't really do a lot right now. Alright. Do this. Clear the creatures. Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Grab a mountain. Play a mountain. Attack for two. Opponent's at 17. Fully dead to any lightning bolt effect. Opponent does not have it. All right. We will forge. We'll forge here. Exile that thing. So, I have seven, eight, nine damage this turn. I have lethal next turn. I attack with both creatures. I see what Caves of Chaos Adventurer hits. I don't need to attack with Den of the Bugbear. I would like to leave the mana open in case I hit something like a Chalice. I did not. All right, my opponent goes to eight. I will play Fable. I will use a Treasure to cast one copy of Bone Crusher Giant. I can never activate that Ancient Tomb. I'm always dead to Price of Progress. I'm just not going to play that. Uh, actually, I can play it for Blood Moon-based reasons. No touchy. All right. Um, I win if I dodge. I've gotten the GGs from my opponent. Uh, that's 4-0 and o now, I believe. We are playing for the trophy. We also haven't dropped a single game. Okay, my opening hand is probably a keep here. There's a couple of different ways I can play it, depending on what I'm expecting. Um, a lot of that is like whether or not I think I want to Blood Moon my opponent. All right, so we are playing against a combo deck. I do not have a Chalice or Trinisphere type card in hand, which means that Blood Moon is the way that I can interact with a combo deck right now. If I Blood Moon, my follow-up plays aren't actually that strong. That is, they aren't that fast. My problem here is that if my opponent is just show and tell, Playing a Blood Moon does not actually stop them from executing their combo. They have the Lotus Petal, they can cast Show and Tell off it. 
they're a different combo deck, there's hope for me still. If I moon. I am going to moon. Mooning makes, like, cantrip and fetching more awkward. I'm just never beating my opponent's best hands here. Like, I'm not an ensnaring bridge build, so I'm just not capable of, like, beating a turn two show and tell hand. Yeah. This is an Archon. I can't get it out of play. I'm going to play, put in a Fable. All right. That is an Emrakul. I don't beat that, unfortunately. I'm just going to check, but I don't believe that I have any out to an Emrakul. Like, the one ring doesn't really count here. Yeah. Damn. Uh, we hit a bad matchup going for my trophy. I would never expect to win this one, just kind of based on how the magic dynamics go. Even if I win the die roll on that one, Lotus Petal still casts show and tell successfully. So I have some Trinispheres I can bring in. I have some Red Elemental Blasts that I can bring in. It's possible Magus gets brought in, but eh. Yuri's pretty bad here. This is not the optimal Bone Crusher Giant matchup. From there, I think I'm going down some number of copies of the One Ring. Um, I'm, I'm just not a fan of this matchup. This is, like, one of the things that I use as an example to talk about, like... Oh, this hand's very good. To talk about, like, matchup dynamics. Your Chalices and Trinospheres ultimately just do not stop a show-and-tell from happening. They de delay the inevitable. All right. Now, again, this stops cantrips. It does not stop a show-and-tell from happening. Maybe this turn... Okay, not this turn. So, I have a choice. I can play Fable and attempt to loot towards another Chalice and attempt to put a Chalice on three. Or I can just play one of my better threats that works on getting my opponent dead. I think I am going to do that. That involves playing Mountain. That involves playing Chromox. I think I imprint the Fable and cast Caves of Chaos Adventurer. The rationale here is that I want to be able to pay for a daze if my opponent does that, and then I want to be able to follow up with another haste creature. Oseju the Chalice. Okay. Wasn't super expecting that. Grab another mountain. I've already played a land. This is turn two. Okay. So with Chalice out of play, I can actually end up finding a Red Elemental Blast to counter a show and tell. I think I'm still supposed to forge rather than Lost Well for that. But I'll think about it. Ooh, that is a ponder to shuffle that brainstorm. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, this feels like get my opponent dead time. Get swole. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely fucking rude. I can play Lilia too. Yeah, love it. This is going to be an attack for 10. Another Lilia. Trinosphere. Fuck yeah. This is false hope because like I win this game now the vast majority of the time my opponent would need soul land plus show and tell plus fatty actually is Magus of the Moon just better than Trinosphere there my opponent has used two lotus petals so it instead would require lotus petal show and land show and tell fatty four cards two of the lotus petals are used yeah I still think I was supposed to Magus that was a misplay. Okay. Um, coming down to the wire here. Still playing for the trophy. Final game. I have a red elemental blast. That probably means I keep my hand. I can even do it on turn one off spirit guide. Um, this is not the most traditional red prison hand the world has ever seen. 
what I'm working with. Chrome Mox Imprint Spirit Guide. Shatter Skull Smashing in. And a little awkward. So like this is one, two, three. I could play Fable on turn one and just drop Red Elemental Blast for one turn. It's just incredibly awkward to do so. I think I'm not going to. I'm going to pay some life here. I'm also going to cast a Chrome Mox and Imprint 1 Spirit Guide now. So that I can play around a daze on a Red Elemental Blast. I may lose this one for being a coward, but I also might just immediately win this one for playing conservatively. This is a time where, like, the one ring not imprinting properly is rough. Fuck. That sure doesn't get Red Elemental Blasted. Okay. So. The one ring? Alright. Alright. We are prepared to fight... The thing that we usually have to fight early on in the game, not sneak attack. I think I imprint this one. Ask the one ring, get protection from everything, draw a card, hit a land, pay the life. I'll still hold up red elemental blast. I will red elemental blast the ever loving fuck out of a cantrip. Okay. Destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less. Understood. That's annoying. Not game over, but it's annoying. I lose some life. Okay. Draw some cards. Play Den of the Bugbear, which is so noticeably worse than a mountain right here. Okay. Am I dead? Not technically. <laughs> However, it feels pretty fucking bad. Why does it feel pretty fucking bad, you might ask, when you are still alive? Well, great question. You see, I go to one, and there's this card that I have in play called the One Ring. No, fuck your, fuck your Vesuvian Drifter. Absolutely not. Archon gets sacrificed. I'm dead to this trigger. I draw some cards I, so that I can be more dead to the trigger. And uh, that's that. My opponent having show and tell, or sorry, having sneak attack rather than show and tell, uh, cost me my 5 0. So, um, we obviously feel good about the deck list here. Is the one ring what you want to be playing in this deck list? And I've had good results with it and good results without it. It opens you up to some weird things, like it makes you worse against days. And it makes it so that you care about Bowmasters way more than this deck normally would. Normally, Bowmasters is a minor inconvenience for the Fable of the Mirror Breaker middle mode, but otherwise you don't care about it. And Orcish Bowmasters is currently the most played creature in Legacy and one of the most played cards. I don't remember if it's still in the number one spot. I think no, I think like Force of Will might be above it or something like that, but it's like very high up there. So I'm on the fence about this card, but like as you saw, you can just draw so many cards and like the protection is relevant. It is a strong card. It fits in this shell, but you got to put in the work to figure out whether or not like it is better than just playing a higher threat density. You know, is this better than playing you know, like a squee, a couple of war bosses, maybe some more removal, that sort of stuff. Um, Bone Crusher Diet did okay today. Um, I'm not going to say it was the best card in the deck or anything like that, but we definitely got some value out of it. We got kind of some weird matchups today, especially the like mono red lotus petal burn ley line of combustion deck list. Um, rather than some more traditional things. So kind of keep that in mind when evaluating this deck list. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Folks, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And if you end up needing to pick up any paper magic cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. Have a great rest of the day. I have to go to jury duty again tomorrow. See ya.